is we're and we're taking your already existing coroutines with this class and allowing you to to call them and gain some control over them. So uh, in the in the case where it's not paused, we're going to drop into the else. So this is uh, this is where a little bit of uh, knowledge of the underpinnings of the of a coroutine and I enumerator actually uh, come into play. So I enumerator uh, and coroutines themselves. What happens is whenever you have a method that returns I enumerator like this, the mono runtime actually creates a class behind the scenes for you, and it's it's a really really simple class. It uh and it, it it's what allows this this uh, coroutine behavior to work, and we're going to take advantage of that right here. So if you remember, the coroutine is the original I enumerator method that you passed into this job. So what we're going to do is first check if coroutine.move next. So what that does is it uh, just checks to see if there is a next iteration and it'll actually run through the next iteration of your method if it exists. And if it doesn't, it will return false. So in the case that it returns true, it, uh, it again it runs your through that iteration of your coroutine and it will set the current property to whatever you yield returned on there. So we then just simply yield return current. So, so we're essentially a proxy for the actual coroutine that you called this with. And uh, that extra layer is how it lets us do this uh, you know, pausing and killing good stuff here. So eventually, once your coroutine is complete, move next or return false. So we'll drop here. What we do is uh, we check to see if we have any child jobs. And if we do have a child job, we're going to yield return and call run child jobs in a coroutine. Now, the reason we want to yield return this call and call it in a, in a start coroutine is we want all of our child jobs to complete before running is set to false. So that is the final method in this class, the run child jobs method. So let's dump that in. And run child jobs, uh, very, very simple method. It just first makes sure we have a child job to run. And what, what it's going to do is pull out the child job with the pop method on the stack. So it'll pop off the, the child, and then it'll yield return start coroutine, the child job dot start as coroutine. And I remember this method. It was a, so we had a normal start method, and then we had this start as coroutine. And uh, as mentioned previously, the whole reason for this is so that we can yield return the execution of this job. And uh, it, it originally was going to be a private method, but I actually saw that it had some merit so, uh, and, and made sense as a public method, so it got flipped to public. So once we run through all the jobs, this uh, run child jobs will complete, and running will be set to false. And then uh, right here, it'll, uh, it'll just end up uh, kicking off that event if there's any listeners to it, the job complete event. So that's it. That's all there is to this class. So there's, there's not that much to it. I mean, most of these methods are pretty tiny. Let's, uh, let's go over here and, and take a quick look of the actual class in, uh, in reality, how it actually functions. So we have three coroutines in our enumerators. So these are methods you may already have in your classes. You may have a whole bunch of enumerators that, that you use in, uh, with start coroutine, and we can now take all these and you can see there's no special code. These are all just straight, normal uh, methods that return I enumerator. Uh, the first one is write log and it writes it total time. So if you passed in 10, it would write 10 logs. Very simple there. Now we have endless log. Similar to that, it'll, it'll be stuck in this while loop forever. So it'll continuously, every second, write something to the log. So uh, previously, if you were using start coroutine, this would be a pretty useless method for you because uh, there's, there's no breaking out of this loop. It's just, it's, it's stuck forever. Uh, but with, uh, with the job manager now, we actually have a way to control that. So then we have uh, print after delay. It does exactly what it sounds like. Prints this text after this delay. And let's take a look at some, uh, some samples calling this. So the first thing we'll do is the most basic 
so we can see, make sure that our job manager actually works. So we just created a button, and what we're going to do is create a job using job.make, and it's going to use the write log I enumerator down here, and it's going to write five logs. So then we set up an event handler, and uh, again, if you, if you don't remember events, look back at our earlier tutorials. We have uh, events in all of them, including uh, a tutorial on events. So the information's there if you want to learn it. So we got the job complete event, and it simply passes in was killed, and then we're just going to log was it killed or not. So let's go ahead and jump over here and have a look at this. So we got an empty console, one button, make and start a five iteration job. Okay, let's do it. So you can see it's going to start dumping to the log every second. And it's done. So the event kicks off. Job done. Was it killed? False. So yeah, of course it wasn't killed because we didn't kill it. So that one died a natural death. So let's uh, jump back over here and do something a little bit more interesting. I mean, we could have done that without the job manager. Uh, it really didn't serve much purpose in that one. This might be a little more interesting. So this one here, we're going to add a bunch of buttons. First one, make paused. So this is going to make make a job paused. So let's just call, add a little bit more descriptive. So we have this job parameter here, and we're going to say job.make, endless log, and we're passing in false, the optional false. And uh, that should start. So we don't want it to start. So what all this is doing is creating a job and adding the event listener. It is not actually starting the job. So this will do nothing on its own but create that job and have it ready. And this is really handy for, uh, for in a level startup, you might want to have a bunch of coroutines ready to roll so you can just create these jobs and have them all sitting here ready to call. So then we have all the buttons you'd expect, like just testing them, how the functionality of the class works. We have uh, start the job, calls job.start, pause, calls job pause, unpause, calls unpause, and we, uh, we have an example of killing it two different ways. So we have job.kill, which will kill it immediately, and job.kill3, which will kill it after three seconds. So this is a little more interesting, so let's have a look at this. So make job paused. Nothing. So it's, it's literally just a, the job is waiting to be called. It's, it's ready, ready for action. So let's start that sucker. So if you remember, it is uh, an endless log. This is going to go on forever. It'll just continuously write logs, incrementing forever. That is, until we pause it. We have the power to pause, so let's pause it. So you can see it's paused. It's stuck there at 13. We can unpause it. It's going to take off right where it left off. And we can kill it. So you can see we killed it, and our event listener kicked off. The complete listener and uh, was it killed comes back true. So that, that's how we can know if it was uh, if it was murdered or if it died a natural death. So let's make another pause job and start it up. You can see it jumping through here. I'm gonna, you know, hopefully you can see this and it's not too small. And uh, I'm going to set kill after three seconds and then jump to the console. So you can see it's still running, still running, and dead. So that, that's handy for if you want to you know, just uh, have your coroutine going for a few seconds before it dies. And let's just do one more. The only thing we haven't seen now is uh, child jobs. So let's take a look at how do we uh, how we add child jobs here. So first thing we do, job.make, like usual. And uh, we'll just use the print after delay this time. So first thing we're going to have is the parent job. And it'll print on the parent job after one second. And uh, like before, we're passing in the optional false here. So it should not start. We'll set up a job complete event handler just like before, and we're going to say parent job's done. So now we just create a loop that all it does is adds five child jobs. So it's going to call create and add child job five times, and it's just going to print this text right here. So it'll be job number one, job number two, etc. And we're going to start that off right after that. So this is uh, this is great for if you uh, if you have a bunch of child jobs you want running with that job, and we're gonna hop back over here and I'm gonna call this here and have a look in the console. So we have on the parent job, 
and now it's it's actually running through the child jobs and parent job done. So all the child jobs completed, and then the parent job done, uh, Ben Handler got called. Super handy there. Uh, that's all there is to it. So if you understand this tutorial, then you are a coroutine master. This is as detailed and difficult as coroutines get. So grab the job manager, use it in your existing classes, use it with your existing I enumerators and coroutines that are already set up and ready to go. And uh, as always, let us know if you have any questions or if you have any future tutorials you'd like to see.